Now you learn how to configure the solution for SAML authentication and authorization. So we first need to configure an enterprise application in Microsoft Azure that does support single sign-on with SAML. We need to define the identifier URL and the reply URL because, as you know, for SAML we need to redirect the HTTPS traffic on the gateway towards the identity provider. And we need to relearn the groups where the user belongs to. And this is why we need to add a group claim. So the easiest thing to create an enterprise application is using the gallery view and you select single sign-on and you just take any of these applications. We then need to understand that these elements here are used to learn the group membership, the group attribute, and these elements here are used in the identity provider object that we configure in the smart console. So you open your smart console, you add a new identity provider object, you select the gateway, you select the remote access VPN that's new and only supported in this particular custom hotfix for R80.40. And as soon as you have defined this, this and this will be populated. Then you copy the identify URL, you paste it here in the configuration in Microsoft Azure and you do the same for the reply URL. And then you close this window by pressing the save button. Once you have closed it, you see in the Microsoft Azure interface that you have Federation XML data. This, this metadata includes the certificate for this application. So you download the metadata and you import the metadata here and this gives you a complete configuration of your identity provider object in the smart console. We then need to look at the group membership, how we can learn groups and how we can use this for authorization. First we look in our Microsoft Azure environment for the group that we want to use and we document the object ID. This object ID needs then to be added to the manifest file of the application that we are using for the authentication and authorization. So we go to our Active Directory and we type the name of the application that we created. We have it and then we go to the manifest option. We can edit this manifest but before we can edit it the first thing we need to do is to change the flag here from is enabled. This is by default in false so we change it to true. Once this is true we can change the description, the display name the value and most important the ID field. The ID field is the field of the group ID that we want to use. Once we have edited the manifest file we go to the SSO part and we need to add a group claim. So again we search the application and we open it under the Enterprise Applications view and then we can add a group claim. When adding the group claim, of course, we need to then assign even the group to the application. So in this way then we have the group listed under Users and Groups for our Enterprise application. Then we need to go to the Smart Console and need again to define an object and this object is an internal group object with the same name, exact same spelling like the name 
configured in Microsoft Azure. This step is currently necessary in this particular custom hotfix for R80.40. Then this internal group needs to be used in the user's dimension of an access role object we need to define. And then this access role object can be used in the access control and threat prevention rules in the rule base. Again, this configuration step is necessary because we are working with R80.40, which does not support the Azure Graph API to read automatically objects for users and groups from the Azure Active Directory. We then configure the VPN community for remote access. We add our security gateway and the internal group in the relevant fields. In order to use groups that are not internal to the checkpoint system, we need to define an external user profile. An external user profile can be defined in the smart dashboard. So you open smart dashboard, for example, then you go to the mobile access plate. And on the mobile access plate, you then go to users, external user profile, you click right one time. And then you go and select that you want to have a generic user profile, then this field is automatically populated. You click OK, and then you have your external user profile. You then close the smart dashboard. Once you have done this, you can go to the gateway object and under VPN clients, you define the authentication option to use an identity provider. See that here in this example, I configured in addition username and password that was um, for testing purpose so that I have, um, that I'm sure that my VPN connection is basically working. You configure the identity provider, you select the identity provider configured earlier, and then you need to define that this identity provider is using groups defined on the identity provider and not on an enterprise LDAP or Active Directory system. Thank you for watching this.